This is another episode of Streets of Success with Frankie, Tone, and Love. And we right got- now, we got a special guest, Mr. Henry Henny Kazmersky. That's me. Because everybody didn't know. So what's going on, Hen? How are uh, you? Everything's going good, Frank. Everything's going really good in life right now. Can't complain about shit. Yeah. Nothing. And if I do complain, I'll email you. All right. I won't talk now, about it. I just want to thank you for coming tonight. Um, got a busy schedule. A lot going on. Um, girlfriend now. Your girlfriend. Yes. Girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, nah, so, uh, you know, this podcast is based on people that got success stories, and I look up to your story. It's inspiring. I'm happy to know you now. I didn't know you growing up. Um, so this is going to be some new stuff to me. As a blessing. This is going to be some uh, new stuff to me. Hopefully I can learn about you today. I, I know who you are now. I'm glad to call you a friend, and I'm glad to see you on the path that you're on right now. So, um, yeah, just start off with, uh, you know, a little bit about where you're from, where you're born, stuff well, like that. Before that, I want to say um, I can remember the first time we talked over by Gahawks Field, yeah. and it was basically uh, a little – show off of our histories and but what we figured out was they were similar you know what i mean um i got i'm from fishtown i grew up there born Where's and fishtown? raised fishtown is our our border lines would be york street to, what, what city uh philadelphia people? sorry mm-hmm. philadelphia in fishtown um it's a little basically polish irish neighborhood middle class hard working uh, there's probably a bar on every other second corner when I was growing up, there's bars everywhere. Um, you know, just growing up in Fishtown, everybody knew everybody. You know, uh, your neighbors were your friends. If you need help with something, your neighbors helped you. Um, you didn't have to knock on the door. You'd walk in your neighbor's house and say, Hey, Kathy, can I get a glass of water or iced tea? And, or you drink out of your neighbor's hose, whatever you want to do. Uh, a lot of that's changed. Not, not, not a lot of it. All of it's changed. Um, but I really enjoyed growing up in Fishtown. It was fun. So growing yeah. up, who... Um who, like, raised you and stuff? Who was, like, your caretakers, your mom in your life, dad in your life, stuff uh, like that? Mom, we, we had a big family. There was over 40 of us in, in like, an eight, nine-block radius. Radius. So I was raised by my mom and my father, um, mainly my mom. My mom's a tough broad, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Uh, Pops went to jail when I was six, came home when I was 18. Um, 12 years? Damn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I had four uncles. So I had the best of, you know, four uncles could actually – interject their wisdom if we're gonna call that shit some wisdom but uh none of them were the same so i'll talk about my with ub uh ub's my uncle brian who is the hard working uncle who basically taught me a lot of what i know in construction you know if i ever got caught in something i'd call him on the phone like oh brian how do i get out of this what do i do and he'd walk me through it guy has more patience than anybody i ever met then my uncle danny you know what i mean was uh everybody always parted at uncle danny's house you know, it's the where everybody uncle. was. He works for Dietz and Watson, so we, if you can imagine, we barbecued a lot, you know, during the summer. No, you did. And everybody gathered there. <laughs> everybody gathered at Uncle Danny's house. Uh, my Uncle Hank, similar, similar to me, you know, uh, had over 20 years clean. So I didn't really fuck with him at the time because that wasn't the life I was living. So Yeah, he was know. the boring uncle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I didn't really care too much about him. <laughs> Then it was my, my Uncle Sonny. Uh, my Uncle Sonny taught me all the good, bad shit I needed to know, you know, because he lived that life of uh, luxury and the street life, you know. Uh, definitely a lot to learn from him. A lot that I learned from him was drinking, you know, how to be how to be a good drinker, be good at it. Um, but growing up, I mean, like our basement, we had a beer moisture down there. You know, mom, mom conceived the notion of if I can keep them here, they'll stay out of trouble. So she put arcade games how down many, there. <clears throat> excuse me. How many uh, were in the house, like brothers, sisters, anything? So we owned a corner store, too, in Fishtown. So we always had, my house was packed all the time. The doors were never locked. Our friends, I, I wouldn't even be there if my friends were there, you know. Um, they'd be down in the basement hanging out down there and playing mm-hmm. games. And we had a big shuffle bowl and TV, Nintendo, and all that stuff. So um, people were always at the house. But I was, my mom, it was, she raised us. But my grandmother was always there too. There was always someone around. Always. Yeah. It was, so your grandmom stayed in the house with you guys too? Nah, she actually had her own house on uh, you know, a few blocks away. Okay. But the name of our store was named after our, our grandmother, uh Cass's Corner Deli, it was called. Mm-hmm. My grandma's Cass. 
She's an hard drinker. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, Graham was throwing back. She's like four foot eight. Shit, she, she <laughs> takes me under the table. <laughs> she can pound with the best. <laughs> I drank with her a couple times. I was like, ooh, Graham. I had to cut it off. You know what I mean? So, you know, you can imagine that everybody was always hanging out at my house. Brothers, sisters? So I had two older sisters. Um, my closest one is Lynn. We're a year and four days apart. And I have another. Our oldest sibling is Denise. Um, I think we're about three to four years apart, somewhere around that range. And she, you know, she just went and did her own thing. But me and my sister, we were always at the house. We had the same friends growing up. So it just made shit easy. You know what I mean? But what came out of it is me and my sister Lynn were best friends growing up. You know what I mean? She knew everybody I knew and all her girlfriends used to come over and, you know, but God damn, Lynn, go be friends with her. You know what I mean? Older or younger than you? She's a year and four days older than me. Okay. So, you know, she was able to go out there and snack some little hot young, youngins in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, Linda, come, come, come over. You yeah. Know? Then, of course, my friends were like, dang, she looks good. You know? Yeah. <laughs> all that good shit. You know, it all ends, right? <laughs> so, needless to say, we had fun growing yeah. up. You know, there was always people around, plenty of family. But then it's like the whole six degrees of separation, too, is you knew everybody in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Fast forward a little bit, you know. Um, Did you know, like, your sister was your best friend growing up, or is it, like, something you look back on now and say, wow, I didn't realize how close we were? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I didn't realize it until years later. Mm-hmm. One of them hindsight things, like you're saying. You know, it was one right. of the things, just like an epiphany one day. I was thinking about it, and I was like, damn, we were tight. We were close. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I really didn't think about it. Uh, she used to rumble and all for me. You know, girls right. would come around starting shit. She fly out of the house. Bing, 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 bing. So no your joke. friends, like your upbringing, like now, like you're, you know, in your teens, who do you hang with? Who are you, like, what's your makeup? Um, makeup was, I mean, we, we used to play a lot of sports. So, you know, uh, not to put anybody's name out there, but, yeah. you know, I grew up with two guys, Joey and Joey, both their names. They're probably the only still, they're probably the only two I talk to out of my childhood. You know, everybody's not a bad thing. Everybody just went their separate ways, separate ways. We drifted apart. Uh, people moved out. You know, <clears throat> different states, different countries, stuff like that. But in all reality, I was the first to drift apart because I chose a way different path than most of them. Uh, I started drinking at a young age, you know. How old? Uh, like probably 11, 12 years old we were drinking. Really? Yeah. Uh, smoking cigarettes. I mean, I remember being in seventh and eighth grade in a dare school, which is also in Fishtown. I lived a block from there. <laughs> I would duck out up Air Street to smoke a bowl of weed before I went to school. Middle you know? grade school. Yeah. So it started young. Yeah, with a kid named Jimmy. Yep. Um, so I, you got to remember, too, though, back then, drugs and alcohol were in abundance. You know, and the household I grew up with, it was like, man, that shit was okay to smoke some weed and drink some beer. And no no father figure because your dad's, you have your uncles, but they don't live yeah. with you, right? So uh, no. Actually, one of my uncles did live with okay. me, my Uncle Danny. And uh, Uncle Danny was like, uh, he, he didn't take place of a father figure, but he tried to teach us the difference between right and wrong. But then he wound up getting his own family. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then at that, round about that time, I was just coming into my early teens. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I started venturing out on my own. I wanted to see what was out there in the world. You know what I mean? And then, of course, what happened was I started like, I like drinking, I like going out to the bars, I like being numb, all that good shit. Then, you know, it starts off smoking some weed every now and then. Mm-hmm. Then that became an everyday thing. This is in your teens? Yeah. Now, were you going to high school or anything? What does that look like? So, high school, uh, <laughs> I did good in grade school. I did okay. Then I hit ninth grade, mass bomb. That was a wrap. It was over with. I get up in the morning. I start rolling joints. I go to the bathroom in school. I start selling for 2 $3 a wop. Then I start realizing I can make money off this. That was it. I didn't eat school no more. I started selling jars of hydro weed and I'm walking clank, 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 clank because I kept them in glass jars. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? What a fucking dummy I was. Like, nobody's going to hear that. Um, but I realized there's money to be made. And I didn't do it. Like, I wanted to, to sell the thing that I didn't have to pay for. You know what I mean? And I wanted to get everybody else high around me too with weed. So I was like, man, I could sell this and then that one's mine. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the thing is, that one that was mine was never enough. Was your dad in jail for this similar thing, or? Uh, it revolves around all that. Revol- yeah, okay. mm-hmm. um, that was a. Uh, they were a little more hardcore. Okay, you know what I mean. They were uh, him and his 
era and his friends were something I would never be. You know what I mean? They're fucking nuts, basically, mm-hmm. if you want to put it like that. Uh, yeah, they were just a different breed. I mean, one thing I can tell you about my dad is, you know, when he said something, he meant it. He didn't have much of a personality. He didn't like to play around. Everything he said was real strict and stern. But mm-hmm. one thing you could count on him is if he told you he was going to do something, he did it. You now, know? now, let me ask you this. Did you know that, like, basically how your father was when you were, like, that young? No. No? Okay. So, of course, you know, I, that's a good question, dude. And I'll tell you exactly what happened was I had my father on a pedestal up here. You know what I mean? Then mm-hmm. he came home when I was 18 years old. And it's like, you know, did you ever love something so much that you just can't see, mm-hmm. you know, the outside, what it really looks like? Right. I loved my dad so much that I wound up hating him. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because I realized that he was just... A fucking normal dude in the neighborhood that was an asshole too, you know what I mean? The way, he, mm. I mean, he had his ways, of course, but we really didn't get along. I was the total opposite of him. I like to fuck around too much. I play around, you know what I mean? He didn't like that shit. Mm. So therefore, what happened was we started not getting along. And I don't know. Listen, I ain't gonna say bullshit, but my dad hit me so fast and so hard one time, I called fucking time out. <laughs> <laughs> I said, hold on. I ain't never been hit like that in my life. Mm. Just don't have it to this day. Yeah, he was good with his hands. You know what I mean? And he fucking, he let me know it, too. And, <laughs> and so I backed off. You know, I moved, I moved down for a little while and shit like that. But uh, So when your dad came home when you were, sorry to cut you off. No, your dad good. came home when you were 18, you were already a man. And uh, I thought this, I was. You thought you were I a thought man. thought I was, yeah. Legally, you're a man. Yeah. So you said you started like... Fighting and not getting along? Or? Not right out of the gate, no. That started, that started developing a little while later. Uh, my father wound up opening up a business, and, you know, I was I was running it with him and stuff like that. And what Of business? course, uh, it was a vending business. Okay. Um, so, of course, I wanted to put my input in on it, and then I, we just get shut right down. So that started uh, creating problems between me and him because it was like, I'm the one out here fucking doing it. You know, you're sitting there eating cheesesteaks, and it's like, I got a better idea how we can make this easier and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. He didn't want to hear it. Old school. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's way it's going to be, and that's it. That's a wrap. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it started developing hard feelings with me towards him, and then that's when the dislike started coming about. You know what I mean? Um, you want me to, like, do all this for you, but value my opinion. Right. Man, fuck it. I don't know who I was. <laughs> you know? So you're 18 now, like, the next chapter of life. 20s you're working like what so so i mean we're, we're gonna fast forward uh I, 18 years old i was in the in the middle of it you know what i mean i like to drink i was running down to bars i was living up in croydon running down drinking i loved being at the bars i never wanted to leave that life living on your own or no nah, i was still so, living with mom and dad okay. <laughs> yeah we're gonna face i was about 21 22 at this time okay. you know what i mean and my dad he didn't interfere with that. He knew it was something I liked to do. So he just, he really didn't fuck with me. Were you working? I was. Yeah, I was working, running the business with my dad. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. Um, Pops took care of me. He took care of the whole family. You know what I mean? He took care of my his, his grandchildren, took care of his kids. Uh, it's one thing I will say about him is he was a provider even when he wasn't here. Uh, the 12 years he was in jail, we didn't miss a beat. You know what I mean? He had a lot, He had good friends. Let me just put it that way. Um, now we're going to fast forward to like the twenties is my dad died when I was 25 years old. He was just wow. about to get off parole. He did it. He had a 20 year stint, did 12 years. He had eight years to walk off on parole. Mm-hmm. He almost made it. Um, so after that, it was fucking freedom, freedom. I did, he was the only thing that kept me in control. You know what I mean? After that, it was. No holds bar. I was ripping and running. I started sniffing coke. You know, I loved that shit. That was good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I instantly, I was like, ooh, what is this? This has been missing. Um, so it started off on the weekends. You know what I mean? I just go to the bar, you know, get a little drunk. Nobody likes to feel the spins. You know what I mean? So you can solve it. <laughs> the big, big blaster, you're good to go for another four hours. <laughs> You know, uh, the bar life was fun. You know, you ran into, you met people. But what it was, was that I, I really liked about the bars was the difference in age. It didn't matter how old you were. You know, the older guys, there was the, the, the generation above you, the generation above them. Like, you're in the same place with them. 
So in the beginning, it's like, man, this is where I want to be. This is where I'm supposed to be is right here with these generations. Then again, you start to realize how I was saying, like my dad, like, man, fuck these people. They're assholes just like I am. You start figuring this out in life, then it gets boring. So then we graduated to crystal meth. Oh, you know shit. what I mean? Wait, now shit gets fun. <laughs> shit gets real fun, you know what I mean? So when that shit came, I mean, that didn't come right online. That was the yellow bathtub shit. You know, you walk around your front yellow line. Yellow bathtub, what's, yeah. what's that? Can you explain it? Yeah, that? so it was, anybody was ba basically making it. It was yellow. It, was, oh. it looked like mush. You know what I mean? Okay. When you left it in your pocket for like 12 hours and you bring it out, you're like, ah, oh, fuck, I own that whole bag. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> I'll get you some when we're done. No. So, <laughs> hey, yo. So, when, you know, of course, that's Wait, like. Wait, so it was weed, alcohol? Yeah. Alcohol, Co weed, coke. Alcohol, weed, ne cocaine. Now, yeah, now we're doing like, some math. What's next? Graduation. Yeah, it's like fucking graduation every few years. You know what I mean? You graduate from one to another. The thing is, when you're doing it, you're a graduating drug addict. That's exactly. Never heard. Hey, I'm moving That's on crazy. up, just like the Jeffersons. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, basically, what happens is, is you get caught up in that lifestyle, right? So, normally, I'm not going to be around people like that. Normally, in the back of my mind, I'm like, not that I'm better than them people, but I don't want to fucking hang out with them. Well, fast forward nine, ten months, I'm sitting on the same couch as they are. Oh shit! You know what I mean? Uh, and I know in the back of my mind, like, I don't want to be here. But I can't deny the fun. And so alcohol is always in the mm. equation. Always. Parties, every party day. I'm always always drinking every equation. day at this point. Partying is always a thing. Yeah. So you're working still? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm laboring. Yeah. Laboring. Are you doing probably, anything? Probably hustling here and there, making quick 300, 400, whatever, get my hands on. Some, some cocaine, you know what I mean? Some weed, yeah. what, whatever it is. Now, you know, somebody comes down, you know, they're like, yo, can you give me some of this, some of that? Yeah, and you now, were whack you, them up. Were you doing anything? I mean, you're doing drugs, right? You're, you're selling them, whatever. Now, are you doing anything like shady or grimy or are you starting to become a scumbag because of it? So everything's bullshit. It's repetitious bullshit starts coming out of your mouth. As soon as the money starts being spent, you got to come up with bullshit. You know what I mean? But then what kind of takes that place is that you try to sell the drugs. Always trying to hustle some kind of drugs. And there was a point there where me and a friend got pretty good at it. You know what I mean? We, we did okay. Um, I'd were, say more him. Were you doing the drugs as you were selling them? or Back when we were selling them, I was not doing them. No, I wasn't doing it. Uh, it wasn't until, <laughs> go figure, right? It wasn't until a little after that, and I was like, ah, okay, I like this shit. You know, when I could have had it all for free, but then I hindsight, it would have been worse if I didn't have to pay for it back then. Abundance of it. So yeah, it yeah, exactly. So it's kind yeah. of a blessing in disguise because when I had to pay for it, it was like, let me get four of them twenties, dude. Let me get four. Let me get. <laughs> I pay you Monday. <laughs> you know I mean? I'm getting whatever I can for free. So I mean, but the lifestyle that I started living, I knew in the back of my mind, I'm like, man, this shit's not right. Mm -hmm. It ain't right. This ain't who I am. When the bullshitting and the lies start taking place, right? Yeah, that's what I was asking. Like, you never did anything like rob, steal. That came did, later. Did they come? Okay. Yeah, that came way down the road. Yeah. Like stealing pedal bikes and going to pawn shops. Like, what, were you ever that bad? No. Uh, no, I know. <laughs> like power tools? I, I went like, right I went right to the deep home and lows, yeah. Deep I didn't, yeah, I didn't do bikes or none of that shit. Like barbecue grills out of people's yards. And you did that? Maybe. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, that's crazy. No, nah, I don't think I was in on that one. But um, that's a funny story because they stole it off somebody, then somebody stole it off them. And it's, you know, one of them fucking junk balls. Dude, you stories. already said everything. You could say you stole a girl, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you could say. Had all planes of cooking on that thing, too. <laughs> cooking what? <laughs> cooking. <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah. I'm going to cook down some crack. But uh, that's so funny. <laughs> to go back to the bar scene, the bar scene. Loves the bars. What's that? Love the bars. I did love the bars. And I still do. I still go to the bars now. Yeah. I mean, you've seen it. Yeah. You're questioning me all the time. What the fuck are you doing out there? Yeah, I got a urine test waiting for you every time. Dude, the 16 yeah. panel. Yep. Hit me with that shit. <laughs> I'm like, somebody slipped something in my drink and my Kool Aid. I'll <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, like, I didn't, it doesn't count as a relapse if somebody else did it, right? Yeah. So, so we just keep going. Henny, so I have a question for you. So Shoot. your life's all scrambled, we'll call it, right? It is scrambled. That's a good way. That's a good word. So, so like how does it 
when does it start to get like when do you start seeing the light of wow like this isn't the life I want to live like is there like is there that aha moment is there like a, incarceration a lose friend somebody. that comes in your life is there a girl is it that's like, awesome how does this like sort of mold into you know the next chapter gotcha uh really good questions again you guys are good at this um we could have sat on this for hours though about in the, in the mix of it we can fast forward to I was 35 years old mm-hmm. is when I had enough. I was beat down. I was living with my nephew who had, uh, he might have been in his early 20s who already had two, three, three kids, I think. Two or three kids. Mm-hmm. I'm living with my nephew. Okay, because I in lost like his everything. like basement or like I, a no, I had a bedroom. Um, so basically what happened was is um, to go backwards, to get forward is I developed a nice little perk 30 habit. You know what I mean? I got hurt one day and then I was like, whoo, these things are fucking fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like all my, because I worked in, and labor's union, I was always like just laboring. I was hurting on a daily basis. My shoulders, my hands. I ate a perk five milligram for the first time. I was whistling Dixie. Them things were phenomenal. I felt fabulous. My hands didn't hurt. My back felt great. So my natural addictive behavior, that's a Friday night on Monday. I said, let me get five of them. You know what I mean? Within three months, I was sniffing perk dirties. Sniffing them. Couldn't function, couldn't get out of bed without them. Every single That's day. when the Home Depot Robin started coming in. You know what I mean? Coming up with scam after scam. And was that your rock bottom? Like no. right there? No? No. No. My rock bottom was when I had to go out. I had a pickup truck at the time that I could barely like the needle was like on a. You know what I mean? Like starting it up was like, whoo, whoa. You know, let's get into the gas station. Right. So I had no money. I'm living with my nephew, his wife, they're married. You know, I got me and my dog. <laughs> me and my dog went everywhere with me, even out on rubberies. No. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> she used to drink at the bar with me, though, for real. That's a true story. Um, what happened was, was I had a bag of Perk 30s. And I remember talking to myself, thinking, man, nah, I'm just going to save some for tomorrow. A friend of mine said this later to me in recovery, too. He said, if you had 10 Perk 30s in your pocket, he said, are you saving them for tomorrow? Absolutely not. Nope. I'm going to do every one of them today, tonight, whatever. I'm going to stay up until they're gone. Mm. And it makes sense later on. But when I had a bag of them and I knew that wasn't going to be enough, and that was my rock bottom. Them little blue things were controlling my life. More than the crystal meth, more than the coke. Crystal meth was recreational. I, I mean, it was something that, I mean, you got to understand with crystal meth, you could do a little bit and you're good for two, three days. 40 bucks, you're good for four or five days. You know what I mean? Write that down. Yeah. I got, I, I'm mathematical equation. Um, and that and that's the thing about that. You know, you get mm-hmm. done work Friday, you know, you mm-hmm. get a case of butt So ice. you were like codependent on Percocets, 30s. Yeah. Low blue ones. Even yeah, with the blue. alcohol? No. no Perc alcohol. 30s actually made me stop drinking because they were fucking my high up. Okay. You know what I mean? Right. So the the alcohol would actually make me start going down. But the Perc 30s themselves, I'd be like, you know what I mean? They got me up. I had the opposite effect like other people had. They okay. gave me energy. So So you're 35. You're living at your nephew's house. Yeah. This is like, so this is where I was saying, like, where is that aha moment? Is that it there where you're like, I got to get my shit together now? Or The aha moment was that, yeah, I'm, I'm 35 years old. I'm living in my nephew's. He ain't, I mean, he's fucking working every day. I mean, just to make ends meet. Right. He's a young 21, 20, well, yeah, 13. Yeah. He's probably uh, in his early 20s. I'm living with him. I'm living with my nephew who looks up to me for all them years. You know what I mean? I'm his oldest kid's godfather. You know, I went to church drunk during the, uh, the ceremony. So that the aha moment came that I didn't have shit. And I was beat the fuck up. I was tired. I had enough remembering lies, burning people. I fucking robbed my own grandpa. I took a deposit off him and never did his roof. Jeez. Dude, that, that's right up there with one of the worst things. You know, you think you love somebody, but that shit takes control over you. It does. You live with, like, horse blinders on. Like, man, fuck you. I don't care. This is what I need. You know, you become a selfish person. Um, and it's strange because in order to, one of my beliefs, in order to stay clean and sober and all, in the beginning, you have to be a selfish person. You know, if you have kids, you can't take care of them kids. You know, you got to focus on yourself in the beginning. You need to pour into yourself before you can start pouring into other people. Well, I, I, listen, I ripped and ran and got high for 12 years. Who the fuck was I? Who was I? I didn't even know myself. You know what I mean? I, I was so, I told my mom I love her. She's like, yeah, you're full of shit. She was right. 
I didn't love her because I, well, I'm just saying it out of repetition. I couldn't even feel it. You know what I mean? I could feel lies, though. I knew when I had the lie, I would feel it. Like, yo, you got to lie right now. And then the shit would just come out. Wow. So you suppress emotions for so long, you know what I mean? You become mm-hmm. a fucking liar. That's who I was. Mm-hmm. And I didn't like it. So to answer your question about hitting rock bottom, that was my rock bottom. I had a bag of Perk 30s and nothing else. So how do you see the light? How do you look forward and like start to get clean? It was like, is there a girl that comes in your life? Is it like... So I guess I called a friend. Uh, I'm going to say his name because, you know, I credit him with... Uh, I love him for what he did for me. You know, his name's Johnny Mulvena. Uh, I called him on the phone and he said, uh, come on up. I got a bed for you. What's a bed? A uh, bed is a recovery house bed. You know, so I went up... Uh, after detoxing, I went up there. I'm still fucked up. You know what I mean? Super Bowl. Super Bowl's on. Uh, we're watching, and I'm like, yeah. Who was playing? I don't even remember. Uh, Couldn't even tell you. <laughs> Could th- 13 years ago, Super Bowl. Um, and I remember sitting in a room with 13 guys. 13 men, and they're fucking. Ah, Super Bowl. I'm like, bro, you need to shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Like, I don't feel good. So... <laughs> <laughs> then I hate you with rules and regulations. <laughs> Stop. I ain't doing that. Who the fuck got a chore? Who are you talking to? <laughs> you know? Clean up and stuff? Yeah, dude. My first chore was trash. All right, I can put some trash out. Motherfucker says to me, he's like, yo, you need to go make your bed. Mm-hmm. Fuck you talking. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. but it's structure, though. So what they're doing is they're preparing you for structure. That's what you haven't had, like, right? So you go back the last 12 years. You said it yourself. You were running like 90 miles an hour, doing whatever you want. Yeah. Now it's these baby steps. Responsibilities. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Structures. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's not easy to receive, though. You know what I mean? Because, like, mm-hmm. you're saying I'm running on what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And then to listen to someone tell you, like, you know, and you're looking at him. He's 50-some years old. You can tell he's been beat the fuck up for 25 years. Just telling me what to do. I didn't adjust to that too well in the beginning. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I had to humble myself. And I'm going to use the word humble because that's how I felt like, all right, I'm going to eat this shit. And then he's like, make your bed. I still, just fast forward, I still make my bed to this day, every morning, just to get that out of the way. It's a good trait. It is. Yeah. So it's the first productive thing, realistically, that I do in the morning is I get up, I make my bed. Yep. Um, and it starts, I mean, even coming home from work, like you go, you walk in your bedroom and your bed's made, shit feels good. Mm-hmm. You ain't looking at a mess, mm-hmm. you know? So, I mean... What came out of that is I'm very anal with the way I live. Everything has a place. I'm very clean. Um, I like a clean house. I, I, I mean, I've been that way when I, when I was a kid. My bedroom was always clean, and you lose sight of that. But I still was able to bring that childhood ability with me to my adulthood, even after 12 years of ripping and running. A lot of people in recovery, if that's what you call it, that actually have those qualities of, like, being super clean and like my brothers were the same way. Yeah. My brother was like a clean freak. He would just walk around and keep on cleaning all day. Like you have to yeah. keep your mind going. Occupied. You have to keep busy. So it's true. It's true. So I mean the way I look at it is is I had to teach myself, like, you know, um, what what am I gonna do with myself? Right. You know, one of the biggest things I had a problem with was sex sober. What the fuck? You know what I mean? I didn't have sex sober for years. So here, <laughs> fucking nine, ten months in the recovery, I'm like, this girl, she's, she comes right up to me. She starts dancing with me. We're at a dance. We're at a sober dance, right? <laughs> my, <laughs> yeah, my, shit, sober dance. my shit starts moving. You know what I mean? Down there, I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do? I got nervous. Knocked the wind out of me like I was a kid in, in grade school again. So <laughs> I asked her, <laughs> I said, how many times you fuck sober? <laughs> <laughs> I should have danced with me no more. <laughs> she, she cut me she right off. She, she, uh, she had to go over a quarter with her girlfriends and it was like four or five of them just start cracking up. I said, that's all right. I'll just keep trying. It ain't no big deal. Mm. So about another, another two months go by and finally, you know, I'm a bad broad. She's naked. I'm naked. I'm like, the fuck am I supposed to do with that? You know what I mean? I was nervous. I was like breathing heavy and shit like that. Finally, you know, you just get like, fuck it. I'm going to throw it in and see what happens. Dude, 20 seconds into it, I'm like, you know, done. Fireworks, 4th of July happens. <laughs> you know what I mean? I look at her. Window. Yeah, dude. It was horrible. <laughs> but she, you know, she was real comforting, too, because I think that wasn't her first time. 
Dude, you know what I mean? She's like, you feel good about yourself? Yeah, right dude, she hit me with, no, that's, she's like, it's okay, you don't worry about it. Get the fuck <laughs> off me. What do you mean it's okay? This ain't, nah, this ain't normal. I got made of shit. But you got to remember, here's my room. There's fucking 10 dudes in the living room listening to all this. There ain't no privacy they can hear. I walk out of that room, they're fucking laughing. <laughs> they're laughing at me. Man, <laughs> I just, and then that's where I start learning it about, it's okay. You know what I mean? To be nervous, it's okay. So then after that, I really started developing, I don't, in case I don't give a fuck, I start dancing in front of people, I'd sing. That's where my goofiness side came in. So this, this stuff you had when you were drunk, when you had the courage to do it and you didn't give a fuck, yeah. you lost it because you're not used to being sober. Exactly. And then you had to regain it, like confidence yeah. and your you personality. It. Yeah. It's still there because I was I was like that when I was younger, before drugs and shit like that. I was a goofy kid. You know what I mean? But yeah, you lose a lot of who you are. You know, it's it's like a battle. So you lose your, you know, emotions and stuff like that. Twelve years go by and you're like, Whoo. How long who were you living I? there for though, Han? Like in this. I was there for about two years. Up really? and sober wow. living in Levittown, did you, yeah. Did you relapse at all? No. This, so when you made that decision, it was done. I'll tell you what I did do is... Uh, <laughs> uh, shit. <what's>, John? <laughs> so I, I, I guess I had about nine months, maybe eight. Nah, about seven, eight months. And I didn't like to feel the pressure of not having money. So I came <laughs> I came down to Northeast real quick and flipped the script, Perk 30s. <laughs> made like three grand. But the bad thing is I took one of the kids that lived with me down to do it. You know what I mean? Maybe we get back this motherfucker rat at me right now. You know what I mean? But he, and who he told was my friend Johnny Mulvana. So I get home <laughs> in the driveway, and Johnny's sitting there on a Bluetooth. And he, you know, I, I'm like, oh, what's up? He gives me the, like, hold on. I'm like, fuck you, you dork. You know what I mean? Give me the hold on. He gets out of the car. He's like, pack your shit, get out. Yeah. Yeah. So for what? You know, of course, the fucking addict to me, he's like, I didn't do nothing. I didn't do shit. You didn't see me do nothing. Yeah. But I, I was so early in recovery that I didn't know that I was I was damaging that kid. I could have made him relapse off of that. Yeah. You know, I didn't take him into consideration. So I actually went and moved to a different sober house. Man, I'm moving that motherfucker to that bed box. Oh, shit. <laughs> About three weeks go by. I'm like, John, please let me come the fuck back over there. He came and picked me up. Lead a bed box with you. Though. Yeah, he did. He, he came and picked me up. And <laughs> I left my clothes in order. <laughs> so, <laughs> That was so, crazy. So listen, thirty five to thirty seven, you did in the in the recovery. Yeah. So basically, you've been sober since then, right? Thirty five. Yeah, I'm forty seven now. Wow, congratulations! Yeah, thank you. Man. January January second was twelve years. Yeah. So Congrats. when do you get into yeah. like a like more serious relationship? Does that happen at all? Like, so you're in there two years. Do you meet uh, someone? Do uh, you... I actually went back with my ex. Uh, I mean, well, she wasn't really my ex. We were still talking, but uh, throughout the duration. <laughs> I can see your it's fucking face. Place. It's a safe place, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's a safe. It's, no one's going to see We can this. do whatever we want here. Yeah, dudes, um, no filter. So, I had... <laughs> I, was, I was with a woman for a long time, man. Uh, a little over 20 years. Uh, off and on. So, when I went into recovery, that was considered a breakup. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I took a two-year hiatus from her. But I'm not going to... I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. I got tired of living in Levittown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I loved her. I love this woman. You know what I mean? Um, but I did realize in recovery that our relationship was based off of alcohol and drugs. Mm. You know what I mean? We used to okay. party at the fuck. Uh, yo, mm. you throw that meth in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I so, mean? You do some freaky shit on the yeah. ass, bro. All right, so yeah. just open the door. Huh? Did you ever? <laughs> I used to have <laughs> outfits in my closet. Yeah, dude, that's how freaky Was there... <laughs> Ever a foreign object in a place totally. where it's not supposed to oh, be. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I can never confirm or deny that. <laughs> was it a thumb? Was it a pinky? Was it... I, I, listen, like I said, I don't know what it was. It might oh, have been a hand. Oh, shit. Let's go to thumbs up, boys. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, honestly, her, I think so, like her hands were too short to reach around. Oh. <laughs> So you're now about 40 years old, right? Yeah, so I, I, I guess uh, I hit about 40 years old. I'm living down in her house uh, back in Fishtown again where it all started. Woohoo! That was smart. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But uh, times got tough because I got hurt at work. Mm -hmm. So I had a really good job, man. I loved my boss, where the fucking ace he was. He was sending me to school to learn how to write, like read uh, machines off satellites to run mm -hmm. excavators and stuff like that. It was cool shit. Oh. Um, and he was really good to good to me. 
Like, I mean, softball team sponsor, no problem. Uh, I get hit. Fucking dude hit me. He was high as a kite. Told him I didn't want him over there on my job. And dude hit me with a backhoe bucket. Uh, mm. Fuck my lower back up. So I think I was down for about maybe a little over three years. So if you can uh, imagine, uh. finances got tough, right? Yeah. What do we resort back to to make money? You know what I mean? Anything we fucking can because we're survivors. It's what we do. Um, you start hustling. I'm going to tell you what that hustle was. We're going to talk about that shit. Ooh, How about it, man? Yeah, yeah, I'll go to see them fucking doctors, bro. <laughs> 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 script after script after script. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I mean, realistically, I didn't know. <laughs> I used my injury. The yeah. funny thing was is I didn't plan this. <laughs> it just fucking happened because I'm going to see these doctors. Mm -hmm. They want to throw here. <laughs> How much do I get for these? What? You now, did, you start, know. did you start a habit again? Huh? Did you start a habit I again? I didn't. Wow. That, that was a blessing. I commend you for that, man. Money was more important. Yeah. Because he, we were. He commended you for not doing the drugs, but selling them. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> You're all right. I don't care what Frank says about you. Yeah. You're a good man, yeah. Lil. <laughs> <laughs> you caught that shit too. So, so you're selling. So, uh, we, I mean, we were behind on everything, dude. That we, this is where uh, the funny thing is, is the the worst point of my life, honestly, when I got hurt, was the best point of my life. I'm gonna tell you a quick story, not to get all mushy or nothing, but uh, I was pissing my pants. I couldn't feel when I had to piss. You know what I mean? So, of course, I'm sparring. I'm like, I'm a fuck. I'm done. Had enough of this. That was back then? Yeah. Okay, because there was piss in the other <laughs> one. I don't know if that was Luther or you. Right. Nah. I mean, right, that was, you're good now. Okay. Pants are dry. Right. Pants are dry as shit, bro. Right. Uh, what are you talking about? Milk and cookie eating, motherfucker. Yeah. So, my bladder is cool. I'm good. <laughs> Both of my, you know, entrance, yeah. extra, they're, they're cool. Spit out, Frank. <laughs> Say it. No, I'm so. So, so uh, my ass is cool. My penis is cool. Pause. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> not that cool. <laughs> no, so... All right. Yeah, go ahead. Say not to get uh, mushy, but let's hear it. So, I'm on the couch, and there's a knock at the door. Yep, just like that. And I'm like, man, I can't get the fuck up off this couch to answer that door. Door flies open. Uh, my grandson, time, walks in. He's only like 11 months old. Grandson? Yeah, so... So you have kids. So, no, I don't have any kids. They're not my biologicals, but... I was around long enough to be a big part of and a factor in her life, you know. Um, so Mason, my grandson, my stepson's kid, um, his mother got locked up. So Mason was down the street at the neighbors. He came down and said, his mommy got locked up. And he threw him in the house. So at this point in time, I was always in Mason's life. I was there the day he was born, but his mom just didn't bring him around no more. When she went to jail, the neighbor dropped him off. So I remember the next two hours, I literally focused so much attention on Mason, my back stopped hurt. I wasn't focusing on the pain in my back. I was more focused on him. And the fucked up part was I was focusing on who the fuck's going to take care of him. You know what I mean? But what came out of it was, was a promise. I made a promise to that boy that I'll always take care of him because I know it just wasn't going to happen. You know what I mean? His dad's a wonderful kid. He really is. Um... You know, um, how, old, how old is he now? Mason. Mason's eleven. So he's this 11. is at eleven months. Or fast forward all the way to he's eleven now. Yeah, he's eleven oh. now. Yeah, and he's still like around with you. And yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, I have a shared custody with his with brown thumb. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's, you know, that's nice. so is his mom home now? His mom is deceased. Oh wow. Yeah, his dad's around. You know. Um, which is one out of two, you know right. what I mean? So, uh, to go back to what we were talking about, which was, what were we talking about before that? We're talking about like now you're, you're selling, you're, you're, uh, your, your back's messed up. So yeah, up. yeah, yeah. Mason now, your I got, stops are, I got a family to take care of. Okay. Yeah, you know I mean, and I can't get out there and, and work, you know, so next best thing is money starts rolling in. Uh, it was, it was pretty good. For a little while, you know what I mean. Uh, we wound up moving from Fishtown to New Jersey. Not off of that. We were, we were done before we went to Jersey um, to start our life. 
we found our thought we found our niche in the world you know we were doing good we we're gonna build a life over here mason's gonna go to great schools and you know all that good shit you feed yourself when you're trying to do right in life and do good things <clears throat> biggest thing we lost was me and my wife weren't compatible my ex-wife well didn't you know we weren't compatible no more we just weren't the same people meaning i wasn't the same person no more but i tried pushing through it because i thought this is what i had to do in life was she still drinking and stuff yeah and you were sober completely mm, okay. yeah and she smoked she takes a cigarette so you turn it down Gotcha. So she smoked a lot. But you smoked yeah. cigarettes. I did smoke cigarettes. So what about that story? Let's get into that a little bit. Because this is around the same time, right? You're over in Jersey. This is about eight years after that. Okay. Eight years. Um, a lot of stuff happened in them eight years. You know, we were started growing as a family. We did it. Well, everything wasn't always bad. You know, we had really good times together. Yeah. Uh, this is when I started trying to pull my family back together. You know, bringing family vacations together. We're traveling. Mm -hmm. Woo, life's fun. And... Everybody started coming over to my house, and barbecues, and all that good shit. Mm -hmm. So that started fading out too, you know, uh, just because people would drink and say shit to each other, and then people didn't want to be around other people. Um, what is this frap lap bullshit you did to here, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So, do you ever go back to work? Like you're, you're saying vacations and pulling the family back together, and you want to, you have this portrait of your life painted. That you're trying to yeah. upkeep, and where does it like go? Where does that does it go bad at? So I, before I mean before it went bad, it did get good. You know what I mean? Uh, I knew I was ready to go back to work. You know, I had some money saved up, and me and my nephew were talking one day. He's like, "Let's open up a restoration company." I said, "Motherfucker, let's do it." So what's a restoration company like? What so is that? we do fire, water, and mold. Okay. okay. How, how old were you? I'm sorry. How old were you? Uh... So we're seven years old. I was about 40. So about for 40 years old. Anyone that's listening, like if you hear, like listen to Henny's path, like 35 is when you decided to like get wake clean. up and get clean. Yeah. So fast forward from 35 to hell now. Five years it took me. 40. So 35 to 40. Yeah. Now at 40 years old, you start this restoration company, mm -hmm. Dry Docks Restoration in Philadelphia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Um that's where I, you know, we'll fast forward in yeah. a minute, but where I met you through Frank, but yeah. So, so I met Frank too. Yeah. So, okay, yep. So I basically, me and my nephew were sitting around. He had some restoration. I knew nothing about restoration. Not a goddamn clue. I worked with my nephew with a restoration company one time, and I did everything but restore anything. <laughs> I restored some shit out of that house. That was about it. <laughs> 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 That's all I did. I drank home. I was drinking his Johnny Walker. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, we, yeah, we open, <laughs> we get together and put our heads together. We open up a restoration company. Um, it wasn't easy. I can tell you that. I got, we, both of us took some lumps and bruises on the way, you know. Um, did it have, and I think one of the bad things was, is it wasn't our first income, you know, at the time. So we had the option to not take it seriously, but then everything took a bad turn for him and me. We did have to rely on our business. So that, but then that's when we dug into it. That's when we start focusing, you know, and then that's also when we started becoming a company. Yeah. So from age 40 to when is that focus? Is it two years? Like when is it? It that took about, in? it took about two years. So 40 to yeah, 40. Yeah, 40, 40. Yeah. Okay. It was uh, a lot of grinding. I mean, late nights. I mean, when we, I bet when we decided to dive into it in full effect, yeah, I mean, shit, you can't see things coming so sometimes. It got bumpy and you had to make the decision to go all in on this now. No side hustles, no other streams of income. Everything back, got let go. Your back's to the wall now. I have That's to make it. this happen. Yeah. This is the only option. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm in my 40s. You know what I mean? Like, who the fuck's going to hire me? Yeah. It's basically what the mindset was. I'll hire you. All the saved money was going, you know what I mean? It was like, I had nothing yeah. else but dry docks restoration. And through all the bumps and bruises, did you ever have like a thought in your mind like maybe I should relapse? No. No. That is a okay. really good goddamn question. Okay. But I will tell you when the seasons change, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people, I can still taste beer. Okay. I'm an alcoholic first. Yeah. One of my first loves is the alcohol. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. It's just the other stuff took that, you know, away from took me away from the alcohol. Mm -hmm. Um you know what I heard? Well, if I go out on a cruise in international mm -hmm. waters, I get drink and it doesn't count as a relapse. 
No, yeah. we ain't going on no cruises. <laughs> nah, we ain't going on no cruises. You don't want to fall overboard, man. Just, <laughs> just stay on lane. Knock a forty off. Chill, right. skip, nah. Skipper. Um, no, I don't. I don't get them kind of cravings. Um, what I do get is thoughts, which only last mm-hmm. for maybe 40, 45 seconds, and they're gone. They're over with. Okay. Um, Still to this day, still have them thoughts. They get further mm-hmm. apart. You know what I mean? Um, when shit gets hard, when times get rough, yeah, of course. I mean, man. Uh, but I already know if I start drinking, life's just going to get harder. So mm. for anyone out there that has these thoughts that are in recovery that think like they can't control it, what do you do when these thoughts arise and you have to like prevent yourself from going on a, on a run again? So one of the things I do is I keep impressing my mind of the piece of shit that I was. You know what I mean? The fucking lies that I told, the people I hurt, I'll never forget it. It's like a daily reminder. Right, you know, right, like right. I was telling you earlier about the shit I did to my grandpa. I love my grandpa more than anybody. And if drugs made me take money off him and not do what I said I was going to do, I'm a piece of shit. At the time. Yeah, at the time, yeah. Yeah. But I also know what happens and what I become. I have that addictive personality. I'm an addict through and through. No matter what I do, whether it's ordering off Amazon. So You know what I mean? So (laughs) with, (laughs) with you being an addict, and you have to go on in your business, do you think that played a part in, like, your addictive behavior and all to, like, now we're in and, and dial more in on your business because that's like something you love. That's something you want to do. Like, do you, do you think that transfers over? It's interesting that you say that. And I'm sorry before you answer, nah, because ahead. like, if you like listen to a few things that Henny said earlier, it's all the same thing. Like when you have to rely on yourself, you make it work. You do. Right. It's you just survival. make it work. It's survival. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it's yeah. everything that you do in business. That's... You work with the tools you're given that you've learned over the years. That's, and hustle. Yeah, hustle is yeah, one hundred percent of this. You he has know? to switch your hustle. Exactly. Yep. So what, what's different? You hustle to get what you want. This when is... you wanted them drugs, you found out how to get them. When That's you want right. a successful business, it takes longer, but you're going to figure out how to. You get do it. figure it out. Mm-hmm. So there really is no difference. See, people, and this is just my opinion. One of my biggest problems was I got my own fucking way. Move, hen. Mm-hmm. Just go forward. You know what I mean? I'm going to give you an example of one of them things was control. One of the worst drugs I ever did was control. When I sold drugs and controlled people, that was more fucking powerful than doing any drug I ever did. I was control. I do that to myself mentally, like get, not stop trying to predict everything that's going to happen and stuff like that. So you, it doesn't happen, and you, you know you, you get hit with a fucking insurance. Like you, somebody files a claim against you or gives you a bad review. Like you try to prevent all that in business, right? It's constantly on my mind and thinking about it. What's going to happen? It's going to fucking happen. Yeah, you, you can, can, only, me. You can that, only control what you can control. Exactly. You just do the, do the best thing you There's can. There's no difference. Right. There's no difference. But there realistically is no difference in the shit we did out on the streets and business. You're dealing with people on a daily basis. You got to figure out what they want, you know, how you can give it to them. You know what I mean? We're selling, like, when I walk into a home or something like that, one of my first jobs is I need to make them understand that I'm here to help them. Yeah. Help. Mm-hmm. Like with capital fucking letters, like I'm here to help you get through this whole thing and make it seamless for you and make you understand that this is what we do. It's crazy. Cause Sometimes it's tough. With <laughs> drugs, you used to only care about helping yourself. Yeah. Right? Now you want to help other people. Exactly. Ironic. It is. But there's lessons that I take and I utilize every day mm-hmm. when I go on jobs that mm-hmm. I learn on the streets. You know what mm. I mean? Sales is sales. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it really is. I was going to ask you that because I was having a um, conversation with one of my friends earlier, and we were talking about, like, self-confidence, like, good self-confidence mm. and, like, bad self-confidence. Like, a lot of people will have, like, bad self-confidence when it comes to doing things, like, streetwise, but when it comes to, like, putting a suit on and going in a room and discussing, like, legit business like their self confidence is like down here yeah. and I was going to ask you that like did you have to work on your your good self confidence or uh, uh, really another good one uh, no I didn't okay. and I'm going to tell you for a simple reason is I figured out early on that mm-hmm. I'm really here to help you Okay. so if I'm really here to help you then there is no confidence to get Right, right. you right. know what I mean mm-hmm. I'm, because there's nothing else I need to tell you exa- ex- except exactly what I'm here for Okay. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. the, the confidence level, is, is, and I hate to say, but it's something else that I never really lacked in life was confidence. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Except when I got sober early, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> two Co- pumps in a wiggle. Confidence level was down. Was way little, down. Two pumps in a wiggle. <laughs> I was done. Done. 
uh, confidence level was no at that time in life. Mm -hmm. But, you know, <laughs> with, you know, when, when it came into business, it's also, too, it's like you don't have time. Mm -hmm. to worry about the confidence level because I'm going to lose my fucking house if I don't. Right, right, You know, right. Uh, right. my grandson's not going to be able to eat. You know, I'm not going to be able to put gas in my car, pay the tolls, come across the bridge. Nobody has time to worry about your confidence. So it's kind of like when you step up and be a man, you fucking just do it, which brings us back to, you know, your hustle. Mm -hmm. that, all, that all comes along with it. Okay. So, Hen, just to, you know, you know, get this, uh, I'm just thinking, like, as we're talk as you're talking here, like, those people that you were doing drugs with all had like that mindset of doing drugs and stuff. Like when you're sober, do your friends change? Does your circle get different? Yeah. Okay. So your circle gets different. Yeah. And okay. One of the biggest things you hear is, oh, what do you think you're fucking better than me? Want to know my answer? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Hmm? I know it's fucked up to say, but yeah, I'm, I'm fucking better than you right now. Like uh, right. in a good way. Yeah. You're saying it's negative. I'm mm -hmm. better than me, you fucking idiot. Like, <laughs> like calm down. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I'm not going to make names or whatever, but I had somebody say something to me one time. I'm like, why is this conversation about me? Typically, I feel like it, the people that are worried about you're better than me, those conversations are more so like trying to convince themselves of something. They're still doing the same shit I was doing. Years. That's the thing is, they're like make, you just said. They're trying to make themselves feel better feel about better. where they're at in life because yeah. you're mm -hmm. further ahead. So yeah. what they can do is they can justify it or you're not acting right now or you're doing something yeah. that you shouldn't be doing. That's why I'm still where I'm at. What I mean, and, and in all reality, what it comes along to is, I'm going to say it's probably the biggest lesson I learned in sobriety is to ask. You know what I mean? Um, I never asked. I, want, I didn't want to ask anybody shit because then your pride's involved. Mm -hmm. You know, or you're putting your shit out there in front of somebody and they're going to fucking make fun of you or use it against you. But in all reality, how the fuck are you supposed to know? Mm -hmm. Example, I'm, in, I'm, living in, I'm living in a sober house, right? I'm in a shower. I'm crying my eyes out. Out of nowhere. I'm in a fucking shower. I'm not happy. I'm not sad. Like, I just couldn't gain control over why I was crying. Now I got to walk through a house, a bunch of guys sitting there and shit like that. And I throw the fuck towel and I walk through, I go to my room. This old guy just came off state road. Like, wow, he was big. Mm. Knocks the door. He's like, hey, honey. I'm like, <laughs> I said, nah, right not now. He's like, open the fucking door. I open the door. He said, you're feeling your emotions again. I said, this motherfucker. Now, how long would it have took me to figure that out? Right? Why, why that was happening to me? He had the answer. He was older than me. He hit it way harder than I ever have in life, and the dude had the answer. So this is where I stop thinking that I'm better than people in life. This is where shit starts changing for me, realistically, is that I need to start talking to people about myself and why this, and I start getting answers back. Mm. Why did I do this? Not like no psychology shit or not like that. Man, I'm in a room with people that, went, that are doing the same goddamn thing as me. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't I talk to them? They got answers. Mm -hmm. So it's just like I have answers now. Like you said earlier, I have a tool bag that I use on a daily basis to stay clean that mm -hmm. I always pull from. I always pull from it. And then it becomes natural instinct, right? You build it. You have an ability to pull on that bag and any tool like boop, right there. Right. It's like a file, you know, same thing like making a bed in the morning. We're starting. I had to mm -hmm. start our day off. Well, it becomes part of who I, who I am. Little tricks of the trade you learn, stuff like that. So as we, like, wind this down, like, what advice would you give, like, some people I, that... I do want to touch on something yeah, yeah, about some resilience that he has. Mm -hmm. As far as, you know, you ended up in a hospital with... Yeah. Him. So if you want to touch on that, I think that's seriously something to talk uh, about. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, one morning I woke up, I was coughing up blood. And again, my mom, I sent her a picture of what I coughed up. And she, mom, don't curse. She said, uh... Come the fuck over, hen. And you're getting in the car. I'm taking you to the hospital. Nah, man, I'm good. All that good shit. You were sober and all now, right? Sober. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is just two years ago. Two years ago. Two mm -hmm. years ago. January 2nd. Was 45 Jan years old. January 3rd. It was two years. Um, I met you two years ago, but I met you in around June. Yeah. May. So that January okay. is when I had the surgery. So I was surgery. in bed for 40 some days. Yeah. Um, turns out I had lung cancer. I had a uh, lung cancer huh. called squamous cell. Uh, I, I used to smoke like an old Pontiac. You, know, you would no, never be able to tell though by like your nah. voice. <laughs> That's, a lot of people tell me that. I got. I'm real soft spoken. Yeah, so yeah, you'd yeah. never even be able to tell. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh shit. So 
Uh, you know, of course, I'm going for the motions. Now, the funny thing is, I was on pain pills like a motherfucker. <laughs> that took me consider it's not a relapse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, <laughs> but uh, no, I had my, it's, it's called a lobectomy. I had my lower lung taken out. So oh. I could have had uh, radiation and all that good shit. But they caught it at such an early stage that it was very, very, very small. That's still not a good thing because it was in my airway. Right. So it wasn't actually in my lung. That small, they would have went in and just went, <laughs> like how you cut drywall out. <laughs> you cut drywall. I put it yeah. back. Yeah, we had somebody here spackle, you know what I mean, sand it down and just patch it up. But unfortunately, they had to take it out because it was in my airway that went to my lower lung. Mm -hmm. So I had my top lung left. But as far as, like, because the way I used to smoke cigarettes, there's still no difference. So you two, know what I mean? two years, no cigarettes? Two years, yeah. I How hard was that giving up? Because you gave up everything else. Okay. Quitting cigarettes? The hardest thing I ever had to do. I smoked two cigarettes on the way to my surgery. Did you really? Uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> on a highway. You know, getting a little fucking nuts with it. Did you, you ever get tempted to smoke a metra? Nah. No, Frank. I didn't because I'm going to... I smell cigarettes now. It's like... What the fuck yeah. was I thinking? Yeah. Uh, I can actually smell. I, 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 I like different foods that I never liked. Taste more. Man, I'm eating pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> I never like pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, just simple things like that. You know what I mean? Like going out to eat with friends and stuff is like, is some of the highlights of my week. Mm -hmm. Trying something. I mean, I, what did you have me try that? Uh, squid. Or, squid yeah. Uh, yeah. Calamar. Calamar. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I tried it. I, I'm fucking sushi's failed. I, I just can't do the sushi. Um, you like the calamari, don't you? The calamari was pretty good, but that sauce that we were dipping his shit in was good. Mm -hmm. um, I so, I mean, yeah. that'd be the fast forward. It, honestly, like, so nothing. What, what's your life look like now? So, that was uh, two years ago, uh -huh. over these real quick past two years. Yeah. You know, how does how does your life look like now? Like, where are you at in life? I was in bed for 45 feel? days after that surgery. Uh, after that after that 45 days is, um, I separated myself from, you know, the ex of 20-some years at that time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then this is really when we started focusing on growing the business. And then I met Frank. Okay. Uh, I mean, I called Frank, just to let everybody know. Mm -hmm. Yo, Frank, what are you doing? Uh, got a job, you want a good job? That's some bullshit, too, because Frank already gave us a job before that. He just never said nothing. Say so I met him through work. I met him through work, yes. Our companies um, work, like, very well together. I mean, reconstruction-wise and stuff like that. But... Like I said, I remember our first conversation by Gahox Field. We just hit it off. And one of the things he did say to me was, what? You want to come on my podcast in two years? <laughs> <laughs> he said, Never I want to introduce you to Tony. Oh, yeah. You know, and you did. And to be honest, um, it goes back to that good old saying, you are with the company you keep. My life is better than it fucking ever has been. You know, I know you all call me unconventional because I still curse and consider white really trash. You know, uh, it's, it's okay. It's all right. We're not going to argue that, but... Yeah. No, we normally say he would... He used to be poor white trash. We tell him, dude, you're not poor no more. <laughs> still <laughs> joke still white trash. <laughs> yeah, definitely still white trash. Um, but life is becoming enjoyable. So, as projected last... Uh, what was it? Maybe nine, ten months ago, you mentioned something to me about, you know, you do right, things things happen. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, the exact words you might have said were, <coughs> if I do positive things, positive things happen. Or keep positive people around you. So right now in life, I couldn't ask for anything better right now. Besides hitting that Powerball or Mega Millions. I mean, I'm not asking for fucking much, am I? No. Yeah, I mean, let me get six numbers. That's it. Um, but what I would like to say to people is that if you stay the course, things happen. Change is fucking wonderful. And one of the things I was so feared up with over life and, and like was change. You know, I got so content and this and that. I fucking thrive on change now. I love it. It's wonderful. I want to meet new people. I want to go new places. I, I, I love talking to people. I like talking shit, too. But, you know, <laughs> we know. We all know that. Yeah, shut up. And, yeah. How long is this been I, going for? Just so everybody knows shut that. Up. They gave me a double shot of espresso for this, too. We call it <laughs> frappa lappa bullshits. Because uh, that's what happens after I drink them. I bullshit. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to maybe end it off. Some questions, anything? Fire away. Um, yeah, Lowe, you have anything for Hanny? No, it's, it's a great story. Amazing story. I mean, um, 
I don't know, man. I'm amazed at your story. Thank you, man. Yeah, Means like a lot. Frank, you said, you showed a lot of resilience throughout your whole life. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you jump from drug to drug, but looking at you now, you run your own business. Like, it's yeah. a dream come true. I did. I, I, I don't want to just dismiss this either, but for them, I've always had family. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, Behind yeah. me. If it wasn't for my family, I would have never made it through. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, like, my, I have my business partner is my family. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I fucking love him. I would never be able to do this without him. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. My mom's always been in my corner even when she wasn't. You know? Yeah. My family's always been behind me. Like, I push them away so I can go do what I want to do. Right, right. You right. know? Um, it's amazing. That shit's important. No doubt. You know? <laughs> and some people are out there, it's a shame because they don't have family, but they can't go find them. Yeah. You know what I mean? They don't some have your to be blood related. Some, yeah, some of your friends become like family. You yeah. talk to your friends more than your family at some point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that you develop like a, a family of friends. Look, I mean, mm -hmm. honestly, look at you're like that little asshole brother I never wanted. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's exactly what you are. That's exactly what I feel like. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you know, even though Tony's younger than me, I don't know why, but he feels like. <laughs> he said, I don't know, because he was born you know. after you. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know why I feel like he's the one that holds the wisdom over us, which, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. like the older fucking. He's up on the hill with the staff and the wizard beard and That's shit. That's nice of you to say. Yeah. <laughs> he just told me I have a lot of gray hair. That's fine. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate that uh, compliment. Hey, what would you yeah. say to anyone like from drug addiction, drug addiction to overcoming and fighting cancer to you know divorce you went through? Like you had these traumatic Everything, events. Man. Yeah. Like what would you tell someone to like that just can't. They feel like they're a victim of everything that happens in yeah. life. When we know stuff yeah. happens to everyone, that's how you overcome it. What would you tell someone that's going through some of them things that you went to? Like, what would you say to them? The ups and downs, like, one of the, are horrible. Some of them are horrible to get over, but you eventually do. You know, pains go away. You learn lessons. Um, you know, when you get that gut feeling like, you know, something bad happened to you. Like, you break mm -hmm. up from your fucking wife or something like that. Like, man, it goes away. You know, you ever punched in the face? Hurts for a week or two. You're good, but it goes away. Yeah. You know, I might get a broken jaw out of it or something, but it goes away. You know, and we get caught up. Like, did you ever run into people that just love fucking drama and they love being negative? They mm. stay there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All you got to do is be the total opposite of that. Get away. Move on. Yeah. Move on. Change. Change. But never stop. So you never stop your feet from moving. You know what I mean? You watch them running back in the NFL. They're getting tackled, but their fucking feet are still moving. Mm -hmm. That's the, one of the biggest lessons you can learn is don't mm -hmm. stop, you know? And with that, you're going to run into new people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you're you're going you're gonna to cross new avenues. You're going to eat new places. You're going to meet new people. Uh, my my sights and my horizons have never been this big in my life. You at know what 40, I mean? 47. At 47 years old. 47 years you're old. You're the most optimistic right now about your future yeah. than ever. Uh, yeah. I took a 12-year hiatus. I don't even reflect on it back. Like some people get caught up. Oh, I should have did this. I'm, I'm at this place. And I get a phone call from a guy I lived with. Just last night, I'm talking to him on the phone, and he's telling me, "Well, I don't have this, 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 and this." I said, "So fucking why? Who cares? Get up, yeah, go to right. work tomorrow, and go get it." Yeah. You know what I mean? You're in your own way right now. I don't get in my own way. I let shit happen the way it's supposed to happen. As we were just talking about me controlling myself, learned that lesson from controlling other people is a fucked up way to live. You shouldn't, uh, like, just stop. Bad shit comes out of it. You know, one thing I do know, and I didn't know this until maybe nine, ten months ago, is the people I have put around me have nothing but positivity on me. But I used to have a, I used to have a hard time, and I'm going to use you as an example. I think maybe we were friends maybe six, seven months before I asked you a fucking question. You know what I mean? I asked you if you could do something for me. And I think it was like I needed a contractor or something like that or someone, you know. Yeah. That's how fucked up it is that I want to ask somebody, you know what I mean? Because I didn't want to show a weakness to you, right? That was me falling back into my old school ways, just like that. Can that guy come back? Because now you don't leave me to fuck alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yo, my man made me flaming yarn for dinner tonight. <laughs> That's it. And I'm not talking like he made it, you know what I mean? He fucking served it to me, you know. But, I mean, Damn. it just goes to... Wow, you got salmon. You had salmon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like the shitty food on the flight. <laughs> I like the salmon. Yeah. Love uh, that chicken. You what else steak. you like, Frank? <laughs> what else do you like? Hey, uh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is really a great story though, man. Like honestly, like just getting to be part of your journey in this sh you know, in these sh two short years that I've gotten to know you and 
I haven't known you very long, but I know you very well. And man, mm-hmm. just you are a great guy, a great friend. You're thriving, honestly. Yeah, it to really see is. you just th- thriving in business and personal. Like I see the way that you're like so much happier now, and mm-hmm. that you move with so much enthusiasm now. It's, it's a great thing to see. Thank and, you, man. It means a lot. For both you as a friend. Yeah, it is. I, I the funny thing is, is, I have a really small circle, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's positive. Well, what do I say? You'd rather have four quarters than a hundred pennies. That's right. That's it it is. You'd rather have a pint of ice is. cream than four quarters. <laughs> <laughs> you call me fat? No. no. Come on, man. Why are you always no. insulting me? <laughs> Why? All right, we're not going to go there. Yeah, hey, we're not gonna, we're not yeah. Frank needs to learn how to stop being hateful. I got evil inside of me, he says. Dark soul. Got you got a dark, dark soul. It comes out sometimes. It's a mean streak. Only he, only he, he brings it out. I can, though. That's why. So but it's a wrap. It's bedtime. You know, ten, Tony's old. He got to get up at 5 in the morning. Um, <laughs> 2.30 for my first <laughs> piss. <you know? laughs> he gave me frappe lap of bullshit, and so I'll be, be I'll be up till fucking 4 in the morning. He's going to be sending love letters. We can wrap this up, though. I'm over Thanks for listening, everybody. Tune in Thank the next you, one. Thank, Thank you, guys. Yep. <laughs> Not the dance. That was good, man. Yeah. That was really good.